Well, hello there. Um, I know I haven't posted a video to this channel in quite a long time. And uh, when I did, I never posted videos of me talking to camera like this. Um, it's been a few years. I have been posting videos on another channel called David Sergeant Coffee, where I was doing some stuff, teaching people about how to roast coffee, uh, brewing coffee. I'm a coffee roaster now. And I was beginning to do these hybrid videos of going out and doing photography, making vlogs out of the photography, including coffee content in that to keep it relevant. But more and more, I've been wanting to do photo-focused video content. So from this day forth, I will be separating the two, um, and I will be doing more photo-focused video content for you here on this channel. So I'd love if you gave uh, a like and subscribe because I want to be doing this. I live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Lots of beautiful places to go to. Woodland, landscape, wildlife photography, astrophotography. I'm going to be pulling all that in because I've been doing it for years and years and years now. Um, I'm going to get my rain gear on because it is a little bit rainy and kind of foggy out and it's still uh this is still an area where i've got lots of um leftover fall color so come with me i'm gonna take you down this trail here in the marquette area and find out what we can find with the camera well so now i can explain i guess my approach here um, and maybe reintroduce myself a little bit. So for those of you who don't know, uh, my name is David Sargent. Long, long time ago, about a decade ago, really, I started this channel um, producing a series of time lapses. I really, really loved Astro time lapses, Milky Way stuff, uh, a little bit of Northern Lights where I could. Back then I was shooting on Man, probably started the channel with the Sony A65 and then got the D5300 on Nikon, then the D810 and D850 and the D500. So all those cameras produce the time lapses that uh, are part of the older uh, catalog on this channel, which I always found fun. Um, I've been doing photography since then. And so it is now 2024. I've been doing photography for well over 10 years, about 12 years really, and um, continue to love it. So I watch a lot of YouTube uh, photography content, probably like you do if you're watching this. People like Thomas Heaton, Nick Page, uh, Adam Gibbs, those, you know, the big ones there, um, and uh, among others. So that's the kind of content I enjoy watching, and I figure. Why not try it myself? And I've got a few of these under my belt on the coffee channel, but I really want to uh, focus on just the photography. That way, um, I have an audience that isn't gonna be bored when I talk about photography. So, I've been doing a lot of landscape photography, wildlife photography, astrophotography, uh, all the nature stuff, you know, for, uh, for all that time, and I love it. And I've done some weddings, and uh, I occasionally do commercial and and uh, portrait work here and there too on the side. And um, in, in fact, I hit weddings pretty hard for a good span of years there. Uh, but now as I'm a coffee roaster, I really don't need to, uh, don't need to push that very hard for income. <laughs> so it leaves photography to being pretty much just out of joy now, which is great. So let me talk a little bit about what I'm doing here today. I'm out at a trail I'm not even on the trail, really. I'm still on the gravel road that gets to the trail because uh, I guess this trail is closed off to uh, vehicles when it gets to be closer to wintertime here, which makes sense. It's a very loose gravel road. I'm sure it would get pretty nasty for most, uh, most vehicular travel. It's only about a quarter mile, so it's a warm-up to the trail. The trail itself is very, very close to town. In fact, I could still hear uh, the travel on uh, 41, the highway just west of Marquette. So that's where I am. It is pretty much just a woodland. This is about as open as it gets right here. Uh, once you get it on the trail, it's pretty, pretty dense stuff. There's a cool little, little, little like creek bed waterfall type thing. The creek does get a little bit wider in certain spots. There's lots of neat 
down trees. So what I'm looking for today is mossy covered things. It's raining right now. Um, we have lots of oranges and browns and uh, the occasional greens. So a lot of earth tones. So I'm excited to uh, try to find some landscape and woodland compositions with some simple color palettes. So before I uh, kick it off to B-roll for a little bit as I walk, I'll tell you what's in my bag. So today I have, uh, well, not just today. I only have the Sony a7 IV to work with. It is uh, a wonderful, well-balanced camera. It is uh, well used. I think the last time I checked, I have about 60, 65,000 shots placed on it. So I was a, uh, I, I was in on the pre-order for that camera and have used it since. And I love it. Um, I do have my gripes about it. As a wildlife photographer, it has a pretty low, um, a slow sensor readout speed, but most people know that by now. But I get by. So I've got the a7 IV. I have the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8 G lens. Love that lens. I have the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4, the, the newer one. And I have the Sigma 28 to 105 2.8, the brand new one. And I love those lenses dearly. Um, that's just what's on my back today, which is uh, weighed down pretty good. <laughs> and uh, I have an FLM tripod. I don't know the model, but it's one of the ones without a center column. And I love that FLM tripod. So that's the gear I'm working with today. And uh, yeah, we're going to hit this trail. I'm on the trail now. Once I find uh, a composition, I'll talk to you again. But for now, you can watch me walk the trail a little bit. Now, uh, just because I watch and enjoy channels like Thomas Heaton and Nick Page and all those guys, doesn't mean I'm going to be producing content that looks as pretty as theirs. Um, what I really value out of their channels is how great a storytellers they are. Um, to be honest, I hardly watch it for the photography anymore, which is probably terrible of me to say. But... I really love to watch it as a, as a whole, as content from start to finish. The, uh, and it, it, I think that, I think that uh, is kind of telling about the way I enjoy photography too. That I just love the process from start to finish. I love getting on the trail. I love doing a two hour hike, which is what this will probably end up being. I love uh, shooting images and knowing they're probably a junk um when i get the rare uh good shot decent shot portfolio shot god forbid <laughs> that'll um that'll just be the cherry on top you know and so when i watch the content uh that i like to enjoy that's what i look for i look for just good natural relaxed fun storytelling whether the image is are good or not and determined by them whether they're good or not so i hardly even like to judge the images honestly like i'll uh i find value that they or i i i i'm happy for them that they got images that they felt worthy of showing right but i'm not sitting there waiting for the images going is this a good one or a bad one <laughs> uh and if you're doing that to me they're probably gonna be junk i don't know um, but I've been doing this long enough that I feel as though that the only work I'm going to show is work I'll be proud of. And if it's not work I'm proud of, then I'll tell you why. And I'll show you what I don't like about it. Or I'll ask you what you think about it. So, anyway, I'll stop rambling. And I think I hear deer running through the woods now, so maybe I should be quiet.
very recently, we had a pretty wild windstorm. Uh, actually about two days ago. So down trees, I expect to see. Um, another reason why this video might not look as good as theirs is because I only have one camera right now. Traditionally, uh, I have two camera bodies, but I recently moved to the Upper Peninsula here in Michigan and in the process sold uh, the A7C body that I had um, just to uh, help us move and secure our house and all the things, right? So I have one body now, which is fine. I'm not shooting it with the kind of demand that I used to. But as a result, <laughs> I'm leaving the uh, cinematic stuff <laughs> to an iPhone 15 Pro. So you can throw some hate in the comments if you want to. That's okay. But I really rather enjoy its capability. Does it make cinematic footage? I guess the more effort you put into making it look cinematic, the closer you get, right? But for me, I really enjoy its portability. I can put it in my pocket, take it out, and film. Things look pretty good out of camera in the year 2024. It is hard to complain about what I see. So that's what you're gonna get. So let's move on and hopefully I find a composition so I can get this tripod set down. Let's work on that. Now, <clears throat> I've been to this trail three times total now. That's not a lot of experience by any stretch on a given trail. However, uh, there's one little feature that I really like and respect on this uh, unassuming trail because it's otherwise very well maintained. There's a conservation group that comes down and they do repairs and they, uh, they really take care of the place pretty well. However, there's a, like a creek, like I said, with a tiny little waterfall uh, down that way. So we're gonna go check that out. Um, I assume that this place is a little more hopping in the spring when the water's flowing and the, the, uh, the snow melts. But for now, it's, um, it's bubbling. There's a, little, there's a little something going on. It doesn't look as pretty as it did a couple of weeks ago when the colors were at its peak but like I said we have a more simplified color palette to work with now so maybe there's something and maybe there's not let's go check it out <laughs> a little slippery Now, call it what you want. Maybe uh, waterfall is not the right term for its size, but it's certainly a decent little cascade. Let's get a better look at that. I've made it down to its level now. I'll turn you around. So at the lowest, right there, that would be about uh, maybe a three and a half, four foot uh, drop from here to there. And then it comes over here. There's a nice little like one footer there. A nice little pool to work with here. There, there, there. So it actually goes up, I would say roughly 10 feet maybe. Um, so there's certainly stuff to work with in there, but it's very tight. It's a little messy. And um, you know, I'm not working with gorgeous light, but it is uh, very, very cloudy because it's a little rainy. So we have soft light, which I prefer with woodland photography anyway, except for, you know, gorgeous like sunrise light through the moss or whatever. Like I'm no Adam Gibbs, but that man can control woodland photography like no other. Here though, we'll find uh, something to work with and whether it's good or bad, I guess I'll, uh, I'll walk you through it. Okay, so time to set up. I've got the 28 to 105 on the body right now. There's a really good chance 
this is the only lens I use today. Um, the 20 mil is wide, but it's not super versatile. I like the 20 mil because it goes to 1.8, so I get that uh, a little depth of field if I'm really close to the subject or I need that extra light. Um, in this case, I'm on a tripod so I can extend the, the shutter speed and I'm gonna wanna do that anyway to get that a nice uh, a silky smooth effect on the water. So I'd probably be down to like a 10th of a second, something in that area. Uh, but the 28 to 105 is so versatile. Uh, I'm probably gonna be at like F8 or F9 or F11 or something like that anyway. So I'm not gonna need that extra light. I'm not gonna need depth of field. Um, so let's stick this on and find something. I don't know that I'm gonna get a, a wide shot at 28 to get everything because it's really messy. And uh, what I think I'd rather do is find a smaller detail in here to home, home in on and um, maybe make a tighter shot somewhere in the 50, possibly over to like 75, 80 mil range. But we'll have to get it on the tripod and look through and, and see. In fact, before I even stick it on the tripod, I'm just gonna take a look through the viewfinder and see what looks good to me. So the shot I do like is actually at 105. Um, it's nothing groundbreaking. And so there's some messiness in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on the tripod and try to make something out of it. There's two things in this image that I don't like that I probably could do something about. There is uh, one dead fern right in here. It's looking very pathetic. Um, so I might be able to move it out of the way. And there's one dead, well, it's a stick, just, it's a stick just laying across. That, it's going straight across uh, the cascade and uh, it's quite distracting. I really don't want to move it in post and I am wearing my waterproof boots, so I might just get over there and remove that stick at the very least. And if I can move that dead fern out of the way, I'll do that too. So let's stick this on the tripod and I'll go do that real quick and we'll come back and start taking some shots. Okay. Success, the bonus mission, the fern moved out of the way as well. Great. The stick is out of the way. Let's start shooting. I might have to get low here and shoot sort of upwards to get the shot that I'm really looking for. If you're just getting into landscape photography, uh, L brackets are really nice to have. That way you don't put stress on your ball head, uh, hanging it off to the side. It can weaken your ball head over time. Um, this is a Benro, this is a Benro VX20. I think I paid like $100 for it. It, it. It's got a couple of nice little features, but if I were to do it again, I'd probably get a little bit beefier of a ball head, um, just for the type of work that I do with these lenses that sit out um, this far out. But it does okay. It doesn't really slip, but I probably would feel a little more secure with a ball head that had a higher uh, weight capacity. Anyway, let's get back to this. Very loose sand right under me here. So uh, I gotta make sure my tripod is nice and planted before I start taking any shots. Now, I know I said that I wasn't gonna need that depth of field, but at 2.8, there's a little bit of this uh, needle tree, this uh, baby pine tree in front of me that's a little bit out of focus. I'm, I'm not sure if I love it, but I, I do find it a little interesting. So I'm gonna shoot it that way. And then I may try to maneuver around it just to get both. Um, but I have it framed now. I've got the top of the cascades in the top right, kind of working its way down, step laddering down to the bottom left of the frame. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm at ISO 100, F2.8. I've got a two second timer on with a 1 20th of a second shutter speed. I think it's okay, but even at a 20th, um, I would like to see that, that water slowed down even more. So I really wanna try to be at a 10th. I'm just trying not to overexpose the white parts of the cascades. So I'm gonna move it to F4, and then I can push it down to 1 10th of a second. That balances out my exposure. I can be at the shutter speed that I wanna be. The out of focus elements are a little bit more in focus, so I probably am not gonna love that as much. I think I'm gonna end up trying to maneuver around uh, those bits of the frame that I don't like as much now. But 
hang on with me just one second. And when you're dealing with moving water, you really want to take a bunch of shots because it's every frame is going to be a little different. So take like 10, 10 shots and you can pick the best at the end. Okay, I took a few shots. I'm going to maneuver now to eliminate some of the distracting bits from the sides of my frame and try to get a little bit tighter on the elements that I do like in this shot. When I do that, and maybe as I'm shooting this, I'll post up both images and you can compare and let me know in the comments which, uh, which image you like more. Okay, I think I got it. Let's move on. That's at least one image in the bag. Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna like that tighter one without the uh, distracting little bits of tree on the right side of that frame. Um, but it's always that way, right? Like when the scene is messy and complex and you're not sure what to do, keep it simple, stupid, <laughs> always in the back of my head. So I try to bring that to the forefront when I'm not sure what to do. Uh, woodland photography especially. Uh, it's so difficult sometimes, especially difficult when you're not in the most lush, beautiful areas for it. This is a nice trail, and the Upper Peninsula certainly has its beauty. Um, but in general, it's very difficult to do. We have lots of mixes of uh, different types of trees that grow in and around each other very densely. And so when you see images from people like Adam Gibbs, um, they put themselves in, in areas that really lend to working well for that type of photography. So part of his skill is knowing where to put himself to make that type of work. It's not to say it can't be done here, but it does make it difficult. This creek runs for a ways all the way through this trail. Um, and there are some other spots where I might be able to make some images along it. There were some other down trees that I've shot in the past. Well, just a couple weeks ago, but not in these conditions. I love getting out in the rain. Before I slip and bust my butt, I'm going to stop recording so I can get down this little hill safely. Be right back. So anyway, back to the point of keeping it simple. Um, oh, I think I almost went off the trail. Uh, keeping it simple. With composition, man, that's such a good way to set yourself apart. And it's the first thing that I often think about. There's other guiding principles like rule of thirds, you know, S-curves. All those things that have been taught as fundamentals for years and years and years. Um, keep it simple has got to be one of them. <sighs> Work things. I've always said... There's that deer. No horns. Big, white, fluffy tail, though. I've always thought photography as an art form of subtraction. As opposed <laughs> to uh, something like sketching, or drawing, painting, something you apply to the canvas. Everything is additive. To a point, right? There's probably elements when things are on the canvas, where you then cover up and alter and modify. But from the start, everything is additive. In photography, you start with a complete photo. That is to say, you start with the composition you took, and then um, you work it down. Um, or at least the composition you first found, let's say that. And you work it down. I, I, I find myself shaving away parts of the frame. Uh, I think Thomas Heaton likes to call it uh, uh, patrolling the borders or something like that. Uh, watching the edges of your frame. And uh, you really can really upgrade the look of a landscape image. Um, a lot of different images. By making sure that 
the distractions that don't need to be there are eliminated. You can do this most easily, probably in Photoshop these days, but um, if you put the work in to get the composition more towards the final product from the beginning in camera, I find you get a better satisfaction. Um, I find there's more value in my work. And um, there's less work to do after the fact. There's literally so many good reasons to practice this in the field. So give that a try. Slow down. I love using a tripod that forces me to slow down. And uh, usually my work is better for it. Not always, but I think it benefits. Let's continue on. I'll stop blabbering for a little bit here. As I continue to introduce or reintroduce myself to some of you guys, uh, like I said, I'm a coffee roaster now. If you're interested, I'll uh, link below the uh, channel, David Sargent Coffee, that I am still active on. I do intend to make more videos for that. It's just been a little while because I'm uh, working 40 hours a week roasting that coffee. It's for Dead River Coffee. Uh, Dead River Coffee has been established in Marquette, Michigan since 2002. It's had a, a nice long history. It's got a rich history in Marquette. Uh, claims to be the first coffee roaster or roastery established in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And uh, I think we make some damn good coffee. I've been roasting coffee since 2021. I did it myself out of my house for about two years. I supplied a couple farmers markets and then I was uh, hired in to Dead River uh, December of 2023. Sold my house in Charlevoix, moved my family, bought a house in the Upper Peninsula and we transplanted successfully, I would say. So that's where I am, who I am and what I've done and on the other channel, I intend to continue making some more coffee-focused content. If you want to follow that, I'd appreciate it. And uh, the photo stuff here. And then I'll also link to uh, the website for our coffee shop if any of you are interested in checking that out. I'd appreciate it. So let's continue. Now that looks like an interesting little cascade I could work with. Only problem is, it's a little steep to get down there. It's only maybe 15 feet down, but the, <laughs> the only way to get there is to uh, kind of scramble down this, these wet leaves. And I'm not certain I can get back up at least without getting really wet and dirty, but that is why I've got all the reindeer on. I suppose I should make my way there. I'll film what I can as I head down. Probably should use my tripod as some form of stability. Oh boy. Oh God. Very loose stuff underneath me. I think we're okay. Oh. oh yeah, this is really neat. Right here we've got this wonderful set of cascades where those, those black rocks 
have been kind of like eroded away. So there's like these smooth little pockets. Um, it looks really great. The only problem is on this lens, I don't have a CPL. This would be the day to have a CPL, to a, a, a circular polarizer. A polarizer can help take the glare off of the reflection of light um, from certain surfaces like wet rocks, leaves, windows, glass, things like that. Uh, luckily, it's so overcast and relatively dim in here, I shouldn't have too much trouble with glare and reflections. It would still be improved with a CPL, so I might pop on the 20 or the 50 that I do have a CPL for. It's just that the filter size for the 28 to 105 is quite large. I don't have a filter for it. Anyway, let's get down here and work with that because it is quite nice. I just got to see how to how to use it. I am very glad that I chose to hike with rain boots on. Not the most comfortable thing to do, but I knew it might come to this. <sighs> but it's just finding the right composition that I'm... Do I want to be at the lower level looking up at the Cascades? Yeah, I think that's the obvious shot I want to get out of the way. Let's start with that. Let's try to make our way down. Only got one more bit of incline to do. And I suppose there's really only one way to do it. I am just about to where I need to be. And I really just got to step into this water and plant my feet and start working on this composition. It's a little muddy. I got some sticks to hold me up. This is this is quite precarious actually for what I thought I was gonna be doing. Okay, I've got two feet in the water. Rubber boots keeping me dry. I got rain pants on. So we're dry. And I am now in the creek. It only took me like 10 minutes. Okay. Let's see what I can make of that. I don't love uh, having the sky be visible in my woodland photography. So uh, I don't know where I'm going to end this composition from, from start to finish. I don't know what I'm going to include. Anyway, I'm going to set you down somewhere where you can see what I'm doing and talk through this. Uh, I haven't looked through the viewfinder yet. But I'm noticing some details I really want to have in here. Uh, there is moss, but there's also lichen. Uh, lichen on these black rocks looks really great, really contrasty. It looks similar to moss, um, but there are spots of it on here that I just love the texture and detail on. So I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and take this at 28 to 105. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna try and take this with my 28 to 105 at 28 and emphasize at the bottom that lichen or that moss, wherever I pick. And uh, hope for the best aiming up towards the cascade, I suppose. Okay, I'll be right back. We've got some lichen right here, right here. Moss over there, moss up there. So I've got little pockets I can work with. It's just, I'm very close, so I'm trying not to take too much away from the cascades by being this close. Now, unfortunately, at 28, the top third of my image is sky because I'm seeing through all those dead trees. I do have the benefit though, in this composition, at the top, there are three prominent trees. So I at least have a pattern there at the top of the image. It doesn't really feel that balanced though, and it kind of leads to nowhere. <clears throat> so I'm not in love with this image. I'm gonna take it and then try to find something else to do with this area. Now I'm gonna try to find a, a little bit more detail 
to, to home in on and take something a little tighter away from this area. One thing I love about this right here is this smooth eroded black rock. It's really, really nice. It's just, uh, I gotta find something to, to, uh, to close in on and, and, and pull the composition out. I love intimate nature, intimate detail shots. Um, so I, I'm gonna come away with something here. Okay, I found that, that pocket of lichen that I really enjoyed when I first got down here and saw that. So I'm at about 50 millimeters, roughly a foot and a half, two feet away from it. A nice tight detail shot, highlighting the lichen, the rock is all wet. I think it's pretty neat. But this is gonna be one of those things where I'll edit it later and I might not love it anymore. Um, for now, I'll show it to you. I think it's neat anyway. Okay, I think I found a pretty neat way to use the, the levels of cascades here. It's gonna be hard for me to describe this image, but my camera is like, eye level with the first cascade floor and so you'll see the cascade that's coming down hitting that and then the rest of it falling down the next set of rocks here's that shot i don't know if it's going to be amazing it's not groundbreaking but it's at least interesting I'm taking a variety of shots of the same composition, adjusting my shutter speed and my aperture uh, to adjust for how much light I need, but also I'm playing with that depth of field because I do have depth between where I'm focused and the, and the back rocks in the background. So one of these is gonna be the one I choose. Uh, maybe I'll have a couple I'll like, but I'm definitely gonna have a favorite out of here. I just don't know which one yet. Now, finally, before I'm done, I'm just, moving the ball head around, the camera around, to try to see if there's any extra tight detailed compositions I can make before I get out of here. There's a lot of texture in here. I'm gonna take my time. I know it's getting dark, but I think this is the last stop before we're done with this video. And I think there's at least one more image I can make. This shot I have here, I found three leaves that are kind of stuck on the rock as the water falls along them. I like it, but it would have been really great with a polarizer. There is some reflection that I'm working working against. Well, that was pretty fun. This was a bit of an experiment, um, but I'm hoping you could hear me over all the water sounds. Anyway. I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, I think I made okay images. Nothing super portfolio worthy at all, but the conditions were right. And I was really hoping there'd be a lot more fog. There was a lot of fog uh, driving today and the rain kind of stopped halfway through too. So my atmospheric conditions cleared up a little more than I wanted them to. Everything is still saturated and still colorful and moody and dark. And those things helped me out a little bit but I was uh, a little more hopeful for conditions that would help me through uh, uh, at least looking through the atmosphere of uh, front to back of an image, right? Anyway, I am going to be doing more videos like this. This is the kind of co content I like to watch. And I also just love being a content creator. I do all the socials for Dead River Coffee. I used to do all the socials for my own small business uh, roasting coffee and that stuff, I love it. So uh, for me, I'm gonna continue. I don't know at what rate, not weekly and maybe monthly, but uh, if you like it, encourage me. <laughs> Tell me that the video was decent. Uh, leave a like if you don't even wanna do that, um, cause that's okay too. Subscribe, that would help me uh, see that there are, is an audience here. So uh, 
thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video because there will be one. Winter is coming. And there's a, a new set of rules we play by when the snow hits the ground. I'll see you guys then.